food chains, and webs, what's for dinner? Every organism needs to obtain energy in order to live. For example, plants get energy from the sun, some animals eat plants, and some animals eat other animals. A food chain is the sequence of who eats whom in an ecosystem to transfer energy. A food chain starts with the energy source, the sun. The next link in the chain is an organism that makes its own food from the sun, which is called a producer or autotroph. Next come organisms that eat the autotrophs. These organisms are called herbivores or primary consumers. An example is a grasshopper that eats grass. The next link in the chain is animals that eat herbivores. These are called secondary consumers. An example is a frog that eats grasshoppers. In turn, these animals are eaten by larger predators. An example is a snake that eats frogs. The tertiary consumers are eaten by quaternary consumers. An example is an eagle that eats snakes. Each food chain ends with a top predator or apex predator. This is an animal with no natural enemies like an alligator, hawk, or polar bear. The arrows in a food chain show the flow of energy. They point to the stomach the food is going into. For example, the grasshopper is being eaten by the frog, so the grasshopper is giving its energy to the frog. As the energy flows from organism to organism, energy is lost at each step. So let's look at our food chain. We start with our producer. So we have grass. It's a producer because it can make its own food. Remember, it's gonna go through the process of photosynthesis. The grass is being eaten or consumed by the grasshopper. The grasshopper is receiving the energy from the grass. You see the arrow. The arrow points to the grasshopper because the grass is going into the stomach of the grasshopper. The grasshopper is the primary consumer. The grasshopper is eaten by the frog. So the frog becomes the secondary consumer. Again, the arrow is pointing into the stomach of the frog because the frog is getting the energy from the grasshopper. The frog is consumed by the python. The python is the tertiary consumer. As a tertiary consumer, it's going to get its energy from the secondary consumer. And finally, our quaternary or apex predator in this case, the highest level is the eagle. The eagle gets its energy from eating the python. Now we can also refer to these as trophic levels. So a trophic level is the level of an organism and the position it holds in a food chain. So let's go through these vocabulary terms. One, producers or autotrophs. These are organisms that make their own food from sunlight. Remember, they're going to go through that process of photosynthesis. Remember, you learned this in seventh grade. Two, the primary consumers are animals that eat the producers. They can be called herbivores. Remember, an herbivore is an organism that gets its energy from eating plants. Number three, the secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. These are going to be carnivores, the ones that eat animals or meat, or they could be an omnivore, an animal that eats both plants and animals. Number four, the tertiary consumers eat the secondary consumers. Five, the quaternary consumers eat the tertiary consumers. And six, food chains end with the top or apex predators, animals that have little or no natural enemies. When any organism dies, it is eventually eaten by detrivores. Think of your vultures, uh, worms, crabs. They can be broken down by decomposers, mostly bacteria and fungi. We always refer to like the mushrooms and the exchange of energy continues. A network of many food chains is called a food web. So let's look at our food web. So we can follow the arrows from the mangoes to the fruit fly, to the thrush, to the eagle. That would represent one complete food chain. But the thrush can also eat a dragonfly. So let's say the fruit fly died out, it was all gone. It could still survive because it can eat the dragonfly. Some organisms can have more than one position in a food web. For example, the wolf can be a secondary if he goes from the corn to the rat to the wolf, or he can be a tertiary consumer if he goes from the mangoes to the fruit fly to the thrush to the wolf, depending on which food chain you follow. The last part is our energy pyramid. The energy pyramid shows how much energy is transferred at each trophic level. Each trophic level has less energy available, so it decreases as we go up the pyramid. Only 10% of an organism's energy is available to pass on to the consumer. The diagram shows that the producer level has 100% of energy. Remember, at the producer level down here, these are your plants. They can make their own food, so through photosynthesis, they have all their energy available to pass on. The primary consumer, the next level up, only has 10%. The grasshopper has to use some of its energy to go find grass to eat. The secondary 
consumer has 1% available. Now with 1%, the frog think he has to go through more to find his grasshoppers to eat. So he's gonna use even more of his energy. So there's less available for then our third level or tertiary consumer, the snake. The snake has to hunt and find its prey. So it only has 0.1%. So when we talk about a food chain or a food web, we're talking about how energy transfers from the sun to different organisms. This is how organisms are able to survive.